Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to go over what you're actually attempting to create for this part of your project. This is the group work on Desmos. You're attempting to create a model of the piston problem number 26 on page 498. And the way the model should work is it, I should be able to toggle the angle A from 0 all the way up to in increments of let's say pi over 12 radians all the way up to 4 pi and what I should see is an appropriate model that represents the height of the point P as a function of that angle A. So P should reach a peak at 10, it should meet, reach a minimum at 6, and I should also be able to see the location of Q and R and the right triangle that's formed by the points P, Q, and R. I should also see a circle with a radius of 2. And we can also look at an advanced version of this, where we can change the size of the circle, or the length between P and Q. Here, the length between P and Q is fixed at 8. But that can be changed. Right? So an advanced model of this would be set up so that those variables could be changed. Let me show you that. There are a lot of things you can do to make this model more complex. And one way to do that is to make it dynamic. To make it so that you can change the radius. To make it so that you can change the distance between P and Q and still have the model predict the height of P. That makes this more challenging. You also might take on the challenge of having it shade in the angle as you turn around. So what is the value of A? I want to be able to see it. You can see there it's shading it. And I would say we have it do it up to two rotations so that on the second rotation you can see there's a darker region shaded indicating that I'm spinning around a second time. So it's a nice little challenge there as well. If you're going to play around with this, Try to set it up so that the model is dynamic and it still works. What do I mean by that? I don't want the distance between P and Q to be so small that P ends up in the circular path right here. It's just too close. I don't think that would work as a piston arm. So for example, I should be able to lower that distance all the way until I reach just above the circular distance there. Right? I don't want to be able to reach in the circle. So if I dip down here, right, I shouldn't have that problem. P should never go inside the circle. So think about how you would do that. And other than that, I don't know that there are any restraints here on the radius. You can have it go as large as you want. I don't need to see a negative radius or a zero radius, but maybe let's say starting at one and up to four or whatever value you want, I should see that this circle um, changes and accurately predicts the height of P as a function of the angle. And again, I did feel like shading in that little angle there as you turn was one of the most challenging aspects of this. Um, so see if you want to take that on. Anyway, this is what a more uh, dynamic approach to the model looks like. It shows the angle, it enables me to change the radius, and it enables me to change the distance between P and Q. All right, thank you.